This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Try Dashlane Premium free for 30 days at dashlane.com slash infographics. And never forget another password and keep all your online accounts secure. Are you the kind of person that wakes up and always seems to feel tired? Sometimes you got 8 hours of sleep, sometimes 12 hours, sometimes 5 hours, but never mind how well you think you slept, you always wake up feeling slightly groggy. Don't worry, you're not alone. Let's now attempt to put things right for you. While waking up for you is nothing special, a lot of things happen to your body when you awaken in the morning. For instance, your heart rate will get faster and your breathing will become quicker. Your blood flow will increase and your brain will start producing different kinds of brain waves. Your liver and kidneys during the night were in sleep mode, but when you awake, they go back to waking mode. You basically rev up for the day and when you open those eyes of yours, the lot of external stimuli will flood your blood. During the night, when you were in sleep mode, you'll have experienced something called REM or rapid eye movement. Most people have about five of these periods during sleep, interspaced with non-REM sleep. If you want to know what REM looks like, just watch your dog's eyes flickering when it's enjoying some Z's. It's during these rapid eye movements when you dream and you're in what we call deep sleep. If you've ever woken up in the middle of a dream, you've woken up during REM. This is important for today's show because the experts say we need this deep sleep. Sometimes you might take a pill to sleep, and while you may think you've gotten a good night's sleep, the drugs may have affected how much real deep sleep you got. Let's say you didn't get down with enough REM. You'll likely know this because when you wake up, you'll feel tired and mightily irritable throughout the day. If this keeps happening, you'll get more irritable, and not getting enough sleep over a long period of time can actually affect affect your health, because when we sleep, our bodies go into repair mode. When we're sleeping, we're charging, and if you want to wake up feeling supercharged, then you have to get enough sleep. Dreaming is important too, it's like allowing your thoughts to spill out. It's kind of a psychological cleansing. So, we're told that the average adult should be getting 7-9 to nine hours of good sleep per night. Many of you will now be thinking, hmm, that's not me. Some of you will get that much sleep but still wake up tired. Now we're going to tell you how you can wake up feeling better. First of all, watch what you eat. You shouldn't eat a lot before you sleep, and if you've snacked on a bunch of processed carbs before bedtime, your blood sugar levels are going to be high and this can prevent you from having a good night's sleep. You should have plenty of water though, and we suggest you keep water near your bed. If you wake up dehydrated, it might not matter how many hours you've got, and you might still feel sluggish. Being dehydrated can slow you down. Another thing is to exercise. We're not asking you to start doing 5 mile runs every evening, but just move about a bit in the day. Exercise can oxygenate your blood and in turn this provides nutrients to your brain and heart. If you're someone who's very lazy, don't think you'll sleep better because you're so good at not moving. That's not the case at all. We shouldn't have to tell you this, but during the night, turn off alerts on your phone. You might think that you don't hear those beeps, but each beep might upset those deep sleep cycles your body so much enjoys. It's really really not hard to turn off those alerts, so start doing it now. Another thing you might not have heard about is not hitting that snooze button. Small increments of sleep do nothing for you at all. It's that good sleep you want. If you enter into a new sleep cycle and then disrupt it after 10 minutes snooze, you're basically ruining that cycle. Your body doesn't like this. The experts tell us there's something called the 90-minute technique, which means setting your alarm 90 minutes before you really want to get up. It's like a long snooze. During those 90 minutes, you'll enter into a REM period and that's good for you. You could not press the snooze button at all, but some people think it's good to have that early wake-up call. When you wake up, the first thing you want to do is stretch. We mean put some effort into this, and not just do the arms in the air thing. Some people do some easy yoga moves. Why would you do this, you might wonder? The answer is because when you sleep, you're in a state of extreme relaxedness, which isn't far from paralysis. The word for this state is atony. You need to come out of this to feel fresh, but most people just saunter around in the morning. It's been proven that doing a few easy exercises in the morning stimulates your brain and endorphins start rushing in. This will make you feel happier and give you energy. On top of this, hit that cold water as soon as possible. In hot countries, a cold shower might be the thing to do in the morning, but that might not be possible when it's cold outside. Nonetheless, wherever you are, you should splash cold water on your face first thing, not hot water. Some experts say that you should keep a spray bottle next to your bed and spray yourself the moment you wake up. It's a short, sharp shock that will get you going. It might sound silly, but try it and tell us what you think. As for eating in the morning, well, these days a lot of people like to skip breakfast and fast, but there is research that tells us breakfast will give you energy in the morning and will provide you with the energy throughout the day. But if you look online, you'll find a lot of people 
people seem to cope with the day better not eating breakfast while others need their breakfast. We guess you should try both and see what works for you. If you do eat something though, don't go for the sugary stuff. If you do, your blood sugar will spike and then it will drop. You don't need this kind of hit as the come down will slow you down. As for caffeine, some studies have shown that a lot of caffeine can wear a person out later in the day. We're not saying don't drink coffee, but experiment with how you feel drinking certain amounts of it. Coffee before bed is a no-no. Most people think that a coffee a few hours before bed is okay, but the stuff has a half-life of 5-8 to eight hours. Make sure your last coffee is a long time before you plan to sleep. Believe it or not, some studies have shown that if the sun is out, then stick your head out the window and get some. We found a study called Vitalizing Effects of Being Outdoors and in nature. It said participants felt refreshed just looking at nature. So open those curtains in the morning ASAP. If you get some sun on your face, that's good because sunlight can increase serotonin levels. Another thing you should do is some mental accounting first thing. It's simple. Tell yourself what you might find difficult in the day and how you might address that. It's a literal weight off your mind. Now comes the good part because then you should think of at least one thing you're looking forward to that day. People generally don't do this, but they should. It sets the day for you. Be clean. What we mean by this is don't go to bed feeling sweaty or dirty. It could affect how well you sleep. In many Asian countries, people always shower before bed, but it's not the same in other countries. Make sure you go to sleep in a clean and comfortable bed and when you wake up, make sure that you make that bed. Making the bed is like preparing for the day ahead. It shows that you're ready to face the day. On top of this, try to wake up at the same time each day so you maintain your circadian rhythm. If you've never heard of that, it's your sleep-wake cycle. The National Sleep Foundation tells us this about it. The more you pay attention to your body and notice feelings of alertness and drowsiness, and the more time you spend developing good sleep hygiene habits, the better your slumber will be and the better you'll feel. Your body just loves consistency and it will pay you back for it. Before you sleep, it's best not to play games or do anything that might stress you out. For the hour before bedtime, try and do something very relaxing, such as reading a book or just relaxing on the sofa. You shouldn't really be looking at screens right before bedtime because the lights can disrupt the production of melatonin in the brain and this chemical helps you sleep. We shouldn't have to tell you this one, but go to the bathroom before you sleep. Your bladder can fill up in the night and the feeling might wake you up, even if you don't go to the bathroom. You might not feel like you need to urinate, but you You'd be surprised how often you can squeeze some out. Always hit the bowl before bed is our advice. Don't hang out in the bedroom before bedtime as much as possible. We know you might like to do this, but your brain should be associating that place with one thing, and that's sleeping. If your bedroom is your castle, you will subconsciously be more energized in that place and it'll be harder to sleep there. As for drinking alcohol, many of you will know that it can help you sleep. Still, it's said booze can interrupt REM sleep and do other bad things, such as give you nightmares. As the booze can relax throat muscles, it can also bring on a bout of snoring, which is not good for sleep. We're sure some of you can attest to the annoyingness of sleeping next to a drunk person. Booze in the system almost always fills the bladder, too, so a trip to the bathroom might be needed during a drunken sleep. Smoking is also not good for sleep, because nicotine increases heart rates and alertness. If you're super addicted, your body might also crave a smoke during the night and wake you up. If you're not willing to give up, we suggest at least trying not to smoke an hour before you go to bed. Colors might be important too. That's at least one study we found undertaken by Travel Lodge. It found that certain colors produced better sleep, and so that's why you might find hotel rooms often being painted or decorated in the same colors. The study found that blue, yellow, and green were the best colors for sleep, while the worst colors were purple and brown. Why? One expert said this, the color blue is associated with feelings of calm, which when picked up by your ganglion cells are relayed to your brain, and help reduce blood pressure and heart rate, all of which help you receive a solid night's sleep. So there you go, paint the bedroom blue, don't drink booze, don't smoke, don't eat too much, and when you wake up, do so with purpose and move around a lot. Wash that face and open those windows. And our last and probably best tip for getting a good night's rest, making it so you don't have to lie awake at night worrying about your online accounts being vulnerable because you stupidly used the name of your first pet as a password and you're not fooling anyone by putting a one and an exclamation point after it. That's why we love Dashlane, the one and only tool you need to keep your digital information and login safe from hackers and malware. 
Their password storage feature lets you quickly sign in and out of any account on any device, breach alerts to let you know when your accounts have been compromised, and an easy-to-use VPN to keep you safe while browsing. Why spend another sleepless night stressing out about losing your notebook full of handwritten passwords? Head on over to www.dashlane.com infographics for a free 30-day trial. And if you use the coupon code infographics, you can get 10% off a premium subscription today. Are you one of those people who's been able to wake up feeling rested? Have you used any of the techniques or do you have one of your own? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video. I slept 3 hours a day for a week and this is what happened. Thanks for watching and as always don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.